Hello, everybody. Oh, thank you. Hey, everybody. How you doing tonight? I'm glad. If, if this is uh, your second night coming out, raise your hand with me. Praise the Lord. Did you have a good time last night? I got you out of here on time, didn't I? I'm not going to do that tonight. No, I'm just playing with you. I'm for real. We're going we're gonna to get out at 8. Hope, I'm trying to get out before 8. Amen. Somebody. Uh, so let's remember, I, I, I said I preach about the four L's. Remember, we're going to laugh, we're going to learn, and then we're going to leave. I'm not a long preacher, so I'm going to go and get this thing over with. But I really want you all to hear what I'm saying today. Uh, if you haven't noticed, our subject matter for today has been trauma. Somebody says, why in the world are we talking about trauma? Uh, because all of us have experienced it in some form or fashion. And you are either dealing with it or you're not. And so we want to give you some tools. We want to give you some information that can help you, like, kind of deal with those things. Uh, I also want to help that person who says, I don't need no help. All I need is God. We're going to talk about it. All right, so let's, let's get into this thing. Uh, our message for tonight is called, Dear Brenda, This is How You Heal the Hurt. Dear Brenda, this is how you heal the hurt. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace, Lord. And I thank you for each and every person under the sound of my voice. They can be anywhere they want to be, but tonight they're here. It's not by happenstance, no, Lord. It is by design that you have me here, that you have them here. You want them to hear a word. You want to minister to their spirit. You want to minister to their physical life. You want to minister to their needs, God. Lord, as my brother was singing earlier, there's something special going to happen here tonight. Miracles, blessings, things we can't even conceive, Lord, is going to happen tonight. Lord, continue to be with us. Lord, block the enemy. He's going to try to attack and tell somebody, you don't need to listen to this. Keep doing what you're doing. But Lord, inspire somebody tonight. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Do me a favor. We're going to read the scriptures. This is Psalms 137 and verse 2. Uh, I want you to stand as we read it. Do y'all mind if we, we give a little respect for the word tonight? Oh my, y'all y'all ain't rocking with me tonight. Good night. I just asked y'all to stand. Goodness. Woo. All right, here we go. This is what the word of God says. By the rivers of what? We sat and wept when we remembered what? There on the poplar we hung our harps. For there are captors as for us for songs. Our tormentors demanded songs of joy. Are you reading this? They said, sing for us one of those songs of what? How can we sing the songs of the Lord while we are in a foreign land? If I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand forget its skill. May my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I do not remember you, if I do not consider Jerusalem my highest joy. Don't, don't miss this. Remember, Lord, what the Edomites did on the day Jerusalem fell. Tear it down, they cried. Tear it down to its foundation. The daughters of Babylon doomed its destruction. Happy is the one who repays you according to what you have done. Happy is the one who seizes your infants and dashes them against the rock. You may be seated. Somebody said, Pastor Miller, what in the world are you preaching about tonight? Let, let, me, let me give you this. This is your parental advisory. Uh, we're about to get into some deep subjects. Because I'll be honest with you, the Bible don't hold nothing back. If you like the tea, the Bible got all the tea. If you like the drama, the Bible has all the drama, all the action, everything. All the stuff people have been doing on these TV shows, the Bible did it first. Amen, somebody. Amen. And so I want to talk about this moment, but I want to preface it with something else. Because I'm talking about something, I don't feel like y'all getting that. So I'm going to bring it to, to this year, to, to more of our time. Uh, give me, help me out here. And guess what? You're not going to get in trouble. Talk to me, young people. Talk to me. Who is the greatest rapper alive? Who, wait, who? Lil Baby? 
I don't know who that is. Oh, goodness, that went over my head. Somebody give me another one. I don't know who that person is. Lil Wayne, Lil Wayne. okay. Okay, that's an easy one, yeah. Somebody give me another one. What else you got? Drake? Drake? Thank you. We got to mention him now. Well, let me squash all that. Let me tell y'all who the greatest rapper alive is. Well, not alive. He's he not alive. My bad. The greatest rapper who ever lived to me was Tupac. Uh, ar argue with somebody else. Nah, nah, nah. Tupac was the greatest rapper. Now, check this out. Pac has some crazy songs, songs that y'all need to be listening to right now. He had a song called Hail Mary. A song called Hit Em Up. Uh oh, you, I'm giving him flashbacks. Y'all know, know how Pastor Aaron is. We, we don't want to give him no flashbacks of carrying that shotgun. But one of his most, I, I think one of his craziest songs was Brenda Got a Baby. If you know the song, if you don't know, you're going to learn it tonight. And I'm going somewhere with this. Get this. Who is Brenda? Brenda is a young lady that lives on the south side of Chicago. You missing this. Brenda is a young lady that lives in New York. Brenda is a young lady that lives in Ypsilanti. Brenda is a young lady who could be in the church tonight. I'm gonna get, let me just show y'all because y'all not getting it yet. Th this is what Tupac wrote. Tupac had a lot of drama in his life, but when he observed the world, he read a newspaper article and wrote this song in response to real life. So this is what he says. Uh, I heard Brenda's got a baby, but Brenda's barely got a brain. Check this out. He says, it's a shame because the girl can hardly spell her name. Now here's the part. There in the background, there's somebody who says this. That's not our problem. That's up to Brenda's family. Somebody ain't getting that. Why does it seem like when issues like this happen, Brenda's 12 years old, according to the story, and she's having a baby. And most of us, when we hear about these things, all we say is, that's not my problem. That's hers. I'm going somewhere with this. Stay with me. Stay with me. This is what he says. He says, now, now, now this is, remember, this is your parental advisory. I'm, I'm keeping it real with you tonight. Here we go. Now, Brenda's really never knew her mom and dad. Junkie put it deaf in his arms. It's sad because I bet Brenda doesn't even know. Just because you're in the ghetto doesn't mean you can't grow. Oh, man, y'all finna have me rapping out here. <laughs> this is what he says. You grew up, and, uh, but hold on, but you thought that this was your own revelation, but whatever it takes to resist the temptation, Brenda got herself a boyfriend. Her boyfriend was her cousin. Are you seeing this? Oh, man, y'all just, y'all be listening to music, just jamming, doing your thing, you know, and that's the worst part. We'll listen to music, and we won't even know what the person's talking about. Here we go. Now, let's watch the joy in. She tried to hide her pregnancy from her family, who really didn't care to see or care if she went out and had a church of kids, as long as the check came and they got first dibs. I'm preaching in here. Oh, my bad. Tupac is preaching in here. Somebody say, preach, Tupac. Now, Brenda's belly is getting bigger. No one seems to notice any changes in her figure. She's 12 years old, having a baby, in love with the molester who sexed her like crazy. Woo! Right? This was written in the 90s. But this is still going on today. Oh, man, if I don't got your attention, you ain't got a pulse right now. Let me, let me help you out. Let me help you out. This is what he says. This is what he says. Uh, 
in love with a molester who's sexing her like crazy, and yet she thinks that he'll love her forever. And the dreams of a world of them two being together. He had it, she had the baby on the bathroom floor and didn't know what to keep or to throw away. So she decided to cry and she put the baby in the trash. Y'all hearing this? Let me tell you what happens next. Uh, she didn't know how much the little baby had her eyes. Now the babies in the trash keep bawling. Mama keeps telling her it hurts, but she keeps calling. Brenda wants to run away. Mama says, you're making me lose pay. The social workers are here every day. Now Brenda's got to make her own way. Can't you go to her? She can't go to her family. They won't let her stay. No money, no babysitter. She can't get a job. She tried to sell crack, but end up getting robbed. Now what's next? There's nothing else left to say. She sees sex as the way of leaving hell. Some of y'all rapping along with me. It's paying the rent. So now it's not, much, it's not much to complain. Prostitute, found, slain, and Brenda was her name. She's got a baby. Now before any of this goes over your head and you think I'm just trying to rap to you in here today, I've been giving up my rap, rap career. This is what Brenda is dealing with. Check this out. Remember, we're talking about trauma. And I'm gonna make it even closer. We're talking about trauma in black and brown communities. Brenda was molested by her cousin. And, and somebody could tell me if I'm, I, the, the song doesn't give all the information, but what I know, I know this, that if Brenda were to have told her mom, what do you think her mom told her? More than likely, mama told her, what did you do to deserve that? You shouldn't have been wearing that around him. Oh, come on, I'm preaching in here. And tell me if I'm lying. She's a child having a baby. She has no education. She ha she's homeless at the end of the story. She's alone. And she's dealing with the mental stress of having to pay the bills, take care of her daughter, and trying to elevate in life when she does not have the resources to do so. Somebody say, I'm preaching your story. Get this, we're talking about trauma tonight. How do we help Brenda? This is your part. How do we help Brenda? Everybody in here is allowed to answer that except her. No, for real, talk back to me. Talk to me, I'm gonna talk back to you. How do we help Brenda? Resources. I like that. Somebody else. How do we help Brenda? Because Brenda exists here today. Therapy. Ooh, girl. Do that. You said what? Give her some more shoes? <laughs> All right. Tell me this. Tell me this. How else do we help Brenda? Community, I like that. She, she doesn't need to do it by herself. I need one more. How else do we help Brenda? I like that. She needs somebody to hear her story. She needs somebody in her corner to listen to her. I like all that. Can I, can I, can I explain something to you? There's these two things called Democrat and Republican. I don't like neither one of them. I know some of y'all down with Trump, one of you down with Biden. I don't like none of them. To me, they're all crooks. I'm, I'm the most anti-political pastor you'll find. I don't care who you vote for. Because all of them tell us the same thing. Vote for me and I'll set you free. And then we vote and don't nothing change. All right, y'all ain't talking to me. So get this, get this. The Democrats and Republicans have two different ways that they like to deal with Brenda. The Republicans say, it is your responsibility to deal with that child because you had it. It's all on you. You know, it's your mama's fault, it's your daddy's fault. If they would have done right by you, you would have known how to take care of that child. That's how the, Democ that's how the Republicans deal with it. Y'all ain't hearing me up in here. But the problem, even though, guess what? The Republicans are right about one thing. 
When we make a decision, no matter what it is, we have to take accountability for our choices. Amen, somebody. But where they go wrong is the Republicans tell people that they ought to pull themselves up by their bootstraps, even though some of us didn't have bootstraps growing up. They ignore the fact that many of us grew up in homes in which we were segregated. Oh, man, let me put it like this. Do you know that the hood exists not because of an accident, but by design? That people intentionally created the hood on purpose. Y'all not hearing me up in here. That for years, you need to read this book, wonderful resource. It's called The Color of Law. It's about how people with money redline communities. They force all these poor people into one community, even though people were trying to get loans, even though people were trying to move out. They forced people into communities. And crime rose, families deteriorated. And so the problem with Republicans are they ignore the reality of this world. They ignore the experience of black and brown people. But can we talk about these, these donkeys? I mean, these Democrats. Hear, hear me out in this place. The Democratic approach to Brenda is this. The Democratic approach is, I'm just gonna give Brenda resources. I'm gonna overload her with food stamps. I'm gonna overload her with stuff. But I'm never gonna give her enough to do better. Y'all looking at me funny, I'm preaching up in here. Hear me out in this place. The democratic approach is, I'm gonna give you this little home, but you better not let no man or no father up in there. Y'all not hear me. Think about this, God created the family for a reason. And then now the enemy uses the government to tear families apart. So guess what? In reality, the Democratic and the Republican approach are right and wrong. Guess what? Brenda needs resources, but Brenda also has to take accountability to be able to move forward. Here we go. I like this. We're going somewhere. Remember what we read? By the rivers of Babylon, we sat and wept, and we remember Zion. There on the poplar, we hung our harps, for there were captors ask us to sing songs. Our tormentors demanded songs of joy. They said, sing us the songs of Zion. Can I give you the history? The children of Israel were deported from their homeland. Their culture was a race. People that they loved were slain. Families were separated. What'd that sound like? It almost sounds like us, don't it? That went over your head like a bonnet. And then they say this, when they get to where their captors are, their captors say, sing us one of them good little songs y'all got. Sing me one of those Negro spirituals. Sing me one of those songs about how you got over. Sing me one of those songs about how everybody will have a shoe in the kingdom. Y'all not hearing me up in here. This is what they do. Keep going. I'm going to keep going. How can we, and this is their response, how can we sing the songs of the Lord while in a foreign land? If I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand forget its skill. May my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. I, if I do not remember you, if I do not consider Jerusalem my highest joy, remember, Lord, what the Edomites did on the day of Jerusalem. Tearing it down, they cried, tear it down to its foundation. So guess what? I want to deal right now with how do we heal the hurt? We know what Brenda has gone through. And here's the reality. Many of us have gone through at least one of those things that Brenda was going through. If you've ever been homeless, that's traumatizing. If you've ever been molested, that's traumatizing. If somebody has ever abused you verbally or physically, that's trauma. And some of us, what we've learned how to do is swallow this stuff and not deal with it. 
And so here's how it comes out. And she talked about it for a moment. She said, we deal with these things and then it bursts out of nowhere. You get mad at somebody over something that wasn't even that deep. You lash out at your kids for stuff that reminds you of your childhood. So we want to help you give you some biblical tools and some psychological tools that you can move forward in this thing. Guess what? Anytime you talk about healing, it's always a process. Amen, somebody. Here we go. This is how we heal the hurt. Number one, own the injury. Everybody say that with me. Own the injury. Oh my goodness. Everybody say that with me. Own the injury. Oh my goodness, y'all are smarter than a fifth grader. Y'all had me messed up for a second. I said, can they hear or not? What's going on tonight? Own the injury. Either you will own the injury or the injury will own you. Either you will learn to master that thing or that thing will master you. I ain't lying. Get this. One of the things I'm learning is, uh, is that we have to admit we have a problem. That's what owning the injury is. Owning the injury is admitting that it happened. She should have never touched you like that. He should have never said what he said. Your teacher should have never said, man, I had a teacher say something so bad to me one time. It broke me even to the point where I was in my 20s. It carried, I mean, she said that I was slow and, and I took that all the way to college. Had a degree, had multiple degrees and still felt like I was slow. I am a little bit, but I'm good now. I'm God working on me. But the thing is you have to own the injury. You have to admit what happened, happened. Here's, here's the thing. Even though you admit it happened, it doesn't mean it was your fault. You're just acknowledging reality. Y'all not hearing me. Let, me. let me show you what the Bible does. Here we go. I'm going to show you this. Remember the Lord. Remember, Lord, what the Edomites did. You, remember, you see what they're doing? They're owning the injury. They're saying this thing happened. You pulled us from our people. And on that day, you pray against us. You wish for our downfall. They're owning the injury. Anybody know who this is? If you don't, I'm going to have to have an altar call right now. Because I'm a, I don't think you're saved if you don't know who he is. This is Derrick Rose. He was a very interesting NBA player. He was from Chicago, and he got drafted to the Chicago Bulls in a very rare situation. In some of his first season, I believe he got the uh, MVP award. Great player, wonderful player. But the problem was, not too long into his career, he, he, did a, he jumped down off of a, a dunk, and I believe he fell down, and he hurt his ankle. And after that, his career had a certain type of trajectory, if you know what I'm saying. But interestingly enough, in 2022, he made a drastic comeback. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Oh my goodness. He had one game where he put the team on his back and scored 50 points and won them the game. It was so great, crazy that after the game was over, he was crying to one of the interviewers and said, I've been working out, I've been trying to deal with my injury, and I never knew that I'd be able to do what I used to do now. Mm -hmm. Ooh, man, y'all gonna get this tomorrow. <laughs> Some of us don't know how much God can heal us. And because we won't acknowledge the injury, here's the thing, the things that you don't acknowledge and confront will never change. The things that you don't face will never get better. If you don't never check your bank account and you just spending money, I promise you, you're not finna look up and have money just appear there. Those, guess what? You know that issues in your family? You know that's that one uncle that people say you don't need to go around him. We need to stop just letting that slide. Those things that we don't confront will never change. And some of us, here's the reality. 
If there was a line for people saying, hey, I want the world to change, everybody would get in it. But if there was another line that says, I want to change, that line would have a few people in it. But in order for the world to change, you got to change. Here we go. I'm going somewhere. The reality is most of us internally are like this meme. We got hell going on around us, and we like, I'm good, I'm fine, it's all, it's breezy over here. Nah, I'm good, you know, I'm just a little late on my rent, I'll be all, it's, I got a pink slip on my door, but I'm good. I ain't got no food in my refrigerator, I'm good. We have to learn how to own the injury or the injury will own us. Let me help you with this. In the natural world, if somebody, if you get cut, what do you do? I mean, y'all act, uh-uh, what's, what do you do? You, yes, you put a Band-Aid on it. You dress it and put a Band-Aid on it. That's natural. But the same thing happened to us emotionally through trauma. But the issue is, think about this. There are certain things that you can handle by yourself. Amen, somebody. You can handle a cut, but if you were to get shot, that's not a wound you can deal with by yourself. Let me help you. Somebody talking about you on your job, you can handle that. But there's some type of emotional wounding and trauma that you can't deal with just by yourself. Let me break this down for you. Here's our number two. This is how we heal the hurt. We have to assess the injury. Do you know what that means? That means we have to look at what happened. Number one, we have to first acknowledge that it happened. Then we have to figure out what we can do to move forward with this. We have to assess the injury. We have to deal with the fact that there are sometimes wounds that are beyond our ability to deal with. I read this one article and my sister, you can tell me if I'm wrong on this. You can, I don't mind. I don't mind being wrong. And it blew me away. I didn't know that you can be traumatized in the womb. It's called prenatal wounding. Your parents are arguing, cussing each other out. And you taking on all that stuff as a child. You come into this world already traumatized. And so some of us, we don't know why we got a short fuse. We just say, man, I'm just, I just, I'm just mad like that. I just always been like that. You don't know where that comes from. And so tonight, what we want to do, we want to help you focus on assessing the injury. If you've experienced any of those things that has happened to Brenda, you are dealing with a situation that is beyond your ability to handle by yourself. Let me help you. Let me tell you what resources you have. The first resource is one that I don't want you to get mixed up. The first resource is God. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. The Bible says, cast all your cares on him because he cares. The Bible says we have not a high priest who isn't bothered by the things that we go through. He understands what we go through. But here's the issue with that. Too many of us, I'm going to say it, too many black folks, we don't want to get help outside of praying. I don't know where that came from. I don't know where it's going, but I don't think it's healthy. No, seriously. There's too many people who say, all I need is God. That's a lie. That's not, that's a lie. If all you needed was God, the church wouldn't exist. If all you needed was God, you wouldn't need a family. If all you needed was God, we wouldn't even need no type of reproduction, children. No. We need each other. And oftentimes we need professional help to help us deal with problems that are bigger than us. I know y'all, oh my goodness. That's all good. Y'all ain't got to like what I'm talking about. I'm a priest tonight. Here's the reality of the situation. In life, I'm noticing this thing. In this article I was reading, it was saying that to experience multiple, uh, I forgot what the word they used, but like deep trauma, 
like being homeless, being molested. If you experience more than one of those things in your life, it talks about how if you don't deal with those things, it can shorten your lifespan by like 10 years. Ain't that crazy? Because of the stress going on in your body. She talked about that. Here's the thing. We don't want anybody in here to die before it's their time. I believe that the Lord wants us all to live lives that are healthy and prosperous. But it starts with us dealing with what we've gone through. It's so easy for us to point the finger at somebody else and say, girl, you need to get you some help. Girl, you need to talk to somebody while you go and talk to nobody. It's all good. See, some of y'all, y'all acting quiet tonight because I done stepped on your toe. I'm cool with that. I'm going to give you what thus said the Lord. I'm going to give you what the word of God says. And if you don't like it, that's cool. Remember what I said. My opinion does not matter. That's why I show you all these scriptures so you can know and see things for your own self. And check behind me. So maybe tonight somebody says, you know what, Pastor Miller? I want some healing in my life. If that's you, I need you to just raise your hand. Now do me a favor. Stand up with me. Because what I... And, and, and that's only for those who want some healing in their life. You want to heal some of the hurt. Pastor Crumb, pray for these individuals who stood up. Amen. Let's pray. Father.